So you may have seen this video of Elon Musk's latest uh, spaceship, the the Starship, blowing up whilst fueling, uh, whilst testing its oxygen tank. So why did that happen? Well, rockets are traditionally two giant fuel tanks, some very powerful pumps that pump that fuel over the period of about two minutes into the engines, which then takes you up into orbit. Uh, those tanks, one of them usually contains a powerful oxidant like liquid oxygen. And liquid oxygen, uh, obviously a cryogenic liquid, boils at about yeah, minus 170, that sort of thing. Um, but there is a colossal amount of it in there. So if you pump it in at minus 170, minus 180, that sort of thing, then the vapor pressure above the liquid will be one atmosphere. That means that you don't need a pressure vessel to store it in, which are probably what all those tanks in the foreground are actually. They're cryogenic storage containers. Now, when a rocket sparks itself up and starts pumping that fuel from the giant tanks into the engines, of course, it sucks a vacuum into these giant fuel tanks. And if you didn't compensate for that somehow, the vacuum would cause those tanks, or the partial vacuum would cause those tanks to collapse. You'd lose the rocket. You'd have a bad day. So what typically is done before the launch of the rocket is you pressurize the headspace of the rocket. Of, of the fuel tank with something that won't liquefy at liquid oxygen type temperatures, which is usually helium. Helium is what is used. So with all the big rockets that I know of, you want that pressure to be as low as possible because that means the tanks can be as light as possible, uh, but yeah, I want them to be strong enough to survive. So with the shuttle tanks and with the Saturn V tanks, they were pressurized to about you know, two atmospheres, two bar, prior to launch. The thing is, here, there is obviously a colossal amount of pressure in there. You know, my reckoning is, you, you ballpark figures, you've got to know what the volume is prior to the actual explosion. But if you say that these you know, tanks are like half full, and they expand to 10 times that size. That means there was 10 atmospheres of pressure in there, which would be insane. Now, uh, it turns out that SpaceX have been trying to do something clever, uh, which is fine. Um, you may remember that they had a rocket that blew up some time ago. And what caused that was a rupture of one of the high-pressure helium tanks. Those are the exact same helium tanks that are used to fill up the headspace of the rocket such that you don't pull a partial vacuum in your fuel tanks and destroy the rocket. Now, SpaceX wanted to get rid of those with some sort of automatic system that repressurized the tanks using some clever mechanism from the exhaust or something. You've got to be very careful with this because if you're going to pump any gas in there, uh, the gas, uh, if mo most gases will simply condense or shrink, contract the second they hit the cryogenic liquid. So you really need a gas that won't liquefy. And like I was saying, I mean, it, it's basically helium. It's light and it doesn't liquefy. So how the hell did they pressurize this thing up to getting on for 10 atmospheres? This, I just don't have a decent answer for. Um, if you wanted to pressure test these things, you know, there's numerous ways you could do it. If you just wanted to test the pressure, you know, you fill it up with water and then just inject a bit of gas into the top. That would pressure test you uh, for the pressure. You might want to pressure test it at cryogenic temperatures, uh, in which case you don't need to actually completely fill the thing with cryogenic liquids, which it looks, from the way this thing blew up, it was mostly full of cryogenic liquid. Um, so this is another thing that gets me. Right? You can actually look up the vapor pressure of the liquid oxygen at various temperatures. So, you know, you start off with liquid oxygen under one atmosphere, boils at about you know, minus 170, that sort of thing. You've got to heat all of the liquid oxygen in that tank up, something like 20 degrees 
which will take you an awful long time to conduct in the energy to heat up tons of liquid oxygen by that sort of temperature. You would have lots of warning to do this. So, I mean, my suspicion is twofold. Um, the first one is something very, very simple, that they have an overpressure valve, um, but as can very often happen when you're dealing with large-scale cryogenic uh, uh, liquids, uh, it just condensed a load of water, froze up. Once the relief valve is frozen up, the temperature just goes up and up and up until the thing explodes. Option number one. Option number two, they were trying to do some smart test with repressurizing the tank. I mean, to me, this seems way too early to be doing that sort of thing. So um, for me, the my gut reaction is there were safety relief valves there, but they were just frozen up. And, um, yeah, once it got up to about 10 atmospheres or something, it went boom. Because, um, uh, yeah, it, it's difficult to see um, why you would test something to destruction like this. I mean, that sort of pressure would be way beyond anything that the tank would normally be expected to run under. Like I was saying, I mean, you, typically the tanks run under slightly more than ambient pressure. The turbo pumps at the bottom take the pressure up to about 100 atmospheres, that sort of thing. So, yeah, I, I've just got no idea why the pressure was so high in their tanks. And no explanation has come forth from SpaceX, just like when their, uh, whatever, their Dragon capsule blew up. So I'm going to go with... Um, it was probably a simple cock up. I mean, the problem is once your safety valves are frozen shut, um, it becomes almost suicidal. Fully fueled rockets are um, exceptionally dangerous. You now, which is one of the things that always got me uh, with Elon Musk's. You know, yeah, we're just going to use them like uh, like um airplanes but i'm going to fly them 10 times as often per day to make them economically viable the longest part of that flight is actually the boat out and back um i mean Gwen, come on this 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 is awesome but it's crazy right like this is never going to actually happen oh no it's definitely going to happen no no it's not going to happen and there's a very good reason for that um and let's talk a little bit about the business everyone thinks rockets are really expensive and to a large degree, they are. And yes, they are expensive, which is why this is a really stupid idea. If only there was some sort of dumb justification that would somehow make this dumb idea even dumber. And how could we possibly compete with airline tickets here? But if you think about it, if I can do this trip in ha half an hour to an hour, I can do dozens of these a day. Right? And yet, a long-haul aircraft can only make one of those flights a day. Well, yes. And if I had transonic solar-powered planes, I could do it even quicker and even cheaper. So even if my rocket was slightly more expensive and the fuel is a little bit more expensive, I can run 10x at least what they're running in a day and really make the revenue that I need to out of that system. And a claim that is utterly preposterous doesn't even hold up to the most superficial of inspections. But God, do Elon Musk fans hate it when you point it out to them. And if you still believe that things like this are going to be flying 10 times as often as airplanes, remember, the more you hit the like button, the quicker this will happen. However, for everyone else, yeah, sure, why not? If you enjoyed the video, drop a like on it and hit the notification bell to make sure you don't miss out on new content.